stream open in the background, recording sounds from coming through. Okay. Looks like I got this set up about the way I want it set up. So, well, I'm just going to go about my business and maybe I'll get a viewer. Maybe I won't. Doesn't matter. Just need to test it out. Oh, shoot. I restarted. So, I've got to put take my Batania trinkets off, put them, and then put them back on by right clicking them from my bar, which will uh, <clears throat> update them again. Okay, now I can move fast and jump high and be resistant to lava. I don't know, maybe it's just the, maybe it's just the one that, uh, that has the problem with that, but I think it's safer just to take them all off, put them back on. And I don't know about the rig of magnetism. It might actually work without a problem. It's this one right here, the soldier's sash. I hope I said that right. The one that makes you run faster, jump higher. It uh, every time you reconnect, I have to put it back on in order to get the effect again. So, just added a bunch of mods to my test pack here, my universal test pack. And the purpose of this pack is to basically have a starting point for when somebody ever wants a pack or want to decide I want to build a pack, a quest pack or something like that, or any other kind of pack. This is going to be like my universal. It already has all the mods in it. All the configs already are all sorted so that they don't conflict. Of course, I still have a couple of conflicts I need to work out. Because I do believe I still have a biome conflict or two. I think I'm still getting an occasional uh, yeah the um, Twilight Forest biomes I had a bunch of them spawning here in the overworld but I don't think I'm getting them as bad now but I still think I'm getting one or two like that right there biome is Twilight Lakes I'm pretty sure it doesn't belong in the overworld that's okay this is just a test world I'm running. A friend of mine built this nice uh, starter area. Well, actually, he built the the big building over there with the lava and the water flows on it and the towers with no caps. And then I've been building other stuff around here mostly. He's not been around. Mm. He has internet issues. He can't get on for a little bit. and probably won't be back for another week. Um hope he gets back soon because I want to probably want his help for the jam-packed competition coming up and this is not going to be in, nothing in this pack though that I'm running right now is going to be part of that because this is 172 the competitions uh, strictly for 164 I mean I probably will use the 164 versions of a lot of these mods actually not really because this pack is more magic focused. The only ones I can definitely say are gonna be in my in my uh comp competition entry is gonna be these uh the Ender IO mod, probably the Steve's factory manager, you know, ones that I have in this one that'll be in that one as well I should say. Uh definitely new Maticraft and probably open computers, applied energistics, those are ones that I have in this one as well. There's my applied energistics system. It's not much to look at right yet. And boy, these the applied energistics too. He definitely uh beefed up the difficulty, that's for sure. I think he beefed up the power usage too, although this thing over here might be draining power, which might be why. I don't know. It, it burns through a lot of coal when I when I try to power it with the furnace generator. Does not seem to want to uh, last, stay on very long. So I only put coal in it when I need to get into there. Really, that's just storing a bunch of extra junk that I'm not using at the moment. Speaking of, there's a bunch of extra junk I can probably toss in there that I'm not using at the moment. 
Yeah. Gems could probably go in there. Oh, out of space. Oh. Let's see. Put this stuff in here. So I don't need any of that right now. Bags, put those away. I'm not really looking at my channel on Twitch or anything like that, so I've got I set up an internet or an, yeah internet relay chat mm. mod that will allow me to talk to the channel or see what people are typing in the chat channel on my mm. Twitch channel, and hopefully people will type there if they show up because I won't really know if I have a viewer otherwise. So I um, probably should figure out how to talk to that channel from the in-game. What do I do there? Talk. See, there's our test chat, my testing in the relay chat sent. What would it be? Guess I better tab out and figure that out before I get too far along. Definitely seems like I found a good mod for that. Aerial IRC does I am pretty much any kind of IRC and Twitch and it does some screenshot fun stuff you know like you want to just automatically upload screenshots to certain to a couple different websites don't know if I'll use any of those features I mainly just got it for the Twitch relay so okay this is the multiple IRC channels you can easily switch between where you want to chat so, what would that be? These. Wait, okay, so um, I want to open the interface here. Twitch chat. No, back up. Glad it blocks out that token thing. That would be embarrassing. Be giving that information out. Yes, come on, client screenshots, server list, notifications, server settings. My nickname's Lance Strider. That's correct. Okay. So would it just maybe it would just be pound T D I T C H? Oops. Pound T D I T C H. No, oh, yeah. No, that doesn't work. I guess I wouldn't know if it worked unless I actually typed a message, right? Twitch, hello. Of course, no. I don't know. That didn't seem to do it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Oh, I see. I was doing something wrong. It's open the chat tab and press tab. Oh, there. See up at the top. Ah! Easy enough chatting to Minecraft, chatting to Pound Landstrat IR on the IRC Twitch TV. There we go. Hello. Oh, I assume it said hello in my chat channel. I'm not looking at it right now. Don't have it loaded because I was getting a feedback. We could have easily fixed that just by muting it. There's no point in taking up bandwidth. Uh, let's see, my 
blood altar automated automated blood altar with Steve's factory manager this thing is really really awesome for this it allows me to basically I only have it set up to, do, to automatically make slates but that's a real big thing for um, blood magic you need a lot of different slates from your altar most other things you don't do a ton of but you do a ton of slates so I figured it's a good thing I'll automate and what these two switches do is allow me to switch between the four different slates and this sign gives me a readout of what mode it's in and this over here will toggle the whole system off and on which also turns off the ritual down here see the ritual of the feathered knife that drains the player's health and automatically fills the altar so you can see I got the cable running over here connects to the bottom of the altar and then a redstone emitter connects to the ritual there works pretty damn good so there you Yes, indeed. Uh, and you hear those explosions going off. That's not actually creepers. What that is, is those are creeper plants. So whenever they get ripe, they blow up and spread their seeds somewhere. Or they try to. What actually ends up happening is that little hopper, hopper hawk right there, that plant from Botania, ends up sucking them up and putting them in this chest. So I have quite a few plastic plant seeds quite a few and I got a couple of ender lilies over here I haven't been able to go to the end yet to get endstone and I well prior to today's update I did not have a method of crafting it I have not checked I might have a method of crafting it now let me see endstone uh, not stone six Wait, what? And stone bricks. No, I just want end stone. There it is. And do I have a crafting method? I do. If I have an ender furnace, I can craft end stone. Which I'm guessing is probably coming from the Ganny's mod that I added today. So yeah, I added Ganny's uh, nether surfaced and end for 172 so that should be well something new for me to mess with here on the, the test pack it's gonna give me a lot more interesting things options and interactions and I like those mods because it kinda fit in pretty well with the whole magic theme that I got going on here because it's just a ton of magic. I mean the only thing I'm really missing is Ars Magica and the only reason I'm missing it is because he hasn't released the 1.7 version yet and I imagine he's probably going to go right to 1.7.10 because he just got finished working on his last update for 1.6.4 and I haven't even had a chance to test that out so because now the server that I normally run 164 on has been down for many weeks, so can't really don't really it's not really in my control the server anyway. And I don't really feel like starting all fresh again by myself. Now if I had a 164 server to play on that had that that uh updated Ars Magica mod I would definitely be checking it out right now instead of doing this because I'm very interested to see how that's been updated. Uh, you see the most recent thing I've been building and I've been working on this this uh, I guess we call that the Church of Magic, the Temple of Magic or whatever. You see I've been using Holy Stone from the Chisel mod, various forms of it make the floor and the, the decorative trim window sills and now the ceiling though the, or the roof looks really nice from the outside I think it looks just like slate like actual slate 
And what that is, is that Skystone brick from the AE2 mod. So you smelt Skystone that you find in the meteors in various places. And then you can get a uh, basically a smooth version of Skystone, and they're not going to be turned into Skystone bricks precisely. It's already out of power. We just put a stack in there not that long ago, like maybe 15 minutes. At least it feels like it was only 15 minutes. It was probably more like 30 or 45. And the time goes by real fast when you're playing around. And this little system over here I got going on, my Batania setup, basically just a little enchanting area for Batania. And what I've got going on back here is these droppers. Now I have better dropper options available, but when I when I installed this system, uh, this was easy, and I didn't have some of the other droppers I have now because I had less mods. But uh, these droppers spit out charcoal, which gets sucked up by these endo flames and provide me lots of power. Well, a bit more power, quite a bit more power than all of these passive generators. These passive generators, you see I've got day blooms and nightshade set up in a alternating checkerboard pattern so that they don't so that they produce maximum efficiency or yeah. So basically as long as there's not another day bloom on any of the cardinal sides of each day bloom and the same with the nightshade, they reduce maximum power. Now when if you try to squish them all together and you know, like save your body three by three. Ooh, those things are loud. Now, say if I had a three by three of day bloom, they would all be less efficient because they would be right next to another day bloom. You know, they compete for the light. And a pure daisy and a clay condia, which this is this thing's awesome. I this thing basically gives me unlimited clay because well. Yeah, just, just pretty much unlimited because um, I can turn cobblestone into sand, you know, using the sag mill real easy. And then I can just take sand out there and place it down and get clay. In fact, I probably should go ahead and convert this sand that I have here into clay so I have it. It works real fast, too. Doesn't even take very much juice. Love that. Love, I love the potato. Oh, I ate the grass. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I do have the advanced genetics mod. It's another bit of technology. Um, problem with advanced genetics mod 172 is it's not compatible with the RF systems of the 172 mods. Other 172 mods. In fact, it doesn't. I don't think it takes RF at all in 172. It did in 164, but um, I believe that when they were up, uh, migrating it to 172, there was there's no uh, universal libraries for the RF yet. And as far as I know, they're still not out. So anybody that's using an RF system is kind of migrated it themselves or something I'm not sure it kind of it's kind of weird uh, there definitely is RF available in uh, 172 because you know your uh, uh, well, the extra utilities is using RF and that's compatible with Ender IO which uses IF and those systems uh, work just fine together and of course, um, the Applied Energistics 2 will accept RF as power. Uh, and I did not put IC2 in. I'm not sure I'm going to put it in. I might add it to this just because it's supposed to be a universal pack that pretty much has everything. And then, like I said, when I do get a request for a for a specific type of pack, I'll be able to just 
Mm. Strip out everything that doesn't fit. Uh, and then, like, sometimes I'll get, like, special requests for, like, really oddball mods to be included. And I'll just be able to toss those in. Resolve only a few conflicts. And there's really not too many conflicts to resolve in the 172 patches. It's going to make mod pack makers... It's going to make a lot of mod pack makers. How's, how's that sound? Um, it, it becomes it's be it, it was much easier to put this 172 pack than it than it is for me to make a pack in a previous version of Minecraft. The 164 and prior to that definitely present more challenges because once you get them put together. You know, you can you download all the different mods that you want in the pack, and you put them in your mod folder and everything, and you run it the first time, and you usually get some crashes. And it, it best case scenario, the uh, client will stop and tell you that there's ID conflicts, and then you gotta go through and resolve all those conflicts and see what the pro the crashes are about. Now, hopefully. I'm really hoping that in 172 they will have fixed the issue. The biggest issue I've had with 164 is the crash in, uh, that involves having too many uh, mob IDs, entity IDs. Um, so yeah, you can in 164 you can only have 256. And if you have a bunch of, or a few mo mods that add just a ton of creatures and mobs, you can get to that 256 real fast. Look, I got poo. It is. It's poop. Um, yeah, that's added by the game surface, by the way, if you're wondering how to get poop in your world. Um, if you're running a 172 version of it, you're supposed to be able to throw this stuff. Don't do it; it'll crash your client. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna demonstrate. But just trust me, if you're running 172 and you got Gany Surface, don't try to throw poop at your friends because it will crash you. <laughs> uh, supposedly that's fixed the new version, but the new version is for 1710, and not all of the mods that I want to use have been updated to 1710 yet, so I'm just gonna just holding off until all of the pertinent ones are where I want to be. So I think that's not gonna be too long. Maybe hopefully by the end of this month all of the most important ones are the ones that I consider important will be updated and then I can update this test pack to 1710. Um, and hopefully Mars Magica will be out by then too. That would be really nice. Uh, witchery. Got Witchery in here. So yeah, um, very, very magic oriented pack right now because uh, a lot of the tech mods haven't updated. Uh, there's no thermal expansion right now. There's no mine factory really loaded. And to be honest, um, if Ender IO keeps going the way it's going, I, I'm not sure I care about thermal expansion or mine factory reloaded. Gosh, I mean, I, I'd hate to say that because those are like, well, especially mine factory reloaded. It's one of my favorite mods for 164 because of all the auto farming features. But, you know, with Ender IO adding this incredibly awesome far farming station. Now, they, I wish it had the ability to do a few more crops at a time, but that's not a big, big deal because, you know, I'll, I'll deal with that. I'll just use more of them, you know. Uh, so, but it does do four, up to four separate crops in, in these four regions, and it, and it splits the land that it is managing up evenly. And then it, in this version, now, that I have. Uh, I think the highest version for 164 is the one that is snapshot 23 or something like that, or 123. Anyway, 
In the latest version, uh, it does have the ability to be upgraded with the capacitors. Now, when it didn't have that like a few versions ago when I was running, so that's new to me. Uh, and these two survivalist generators, because the if you really look in here, we can cover over here. It says 10 RF a tick max, so the most power that it will be used is 10 RF, and these produce five five RF a tick. So two of these perfectly runs one of these farming stations for a very long time, because each one of these pieces of charcoal lasts about 30 minutes. That time might be a little bit, but it yeah, about thirty minutes. So sixty-four times thirty that's like a couple days. Yeah. I mean that's thirty-two hours, right? That's like a day and a half. I mean if this if this was to stay loaded, I mean I could just check in on it once a day and fill these survivalist generators up and it would just continuously keep the farm going. And with the uh, with the maximum, you no. Know, see, I've only got the double layered in there right now. And that I'm not sure exactly what radius that pushes it out to, but it definitely does this whole pen. Without the without the capacitor, it's just shy of doing a nine by nine. It only does like a seven by seven no. without that capacitor. At least it did in the previous version. I think it still does a 7 by 7 without the capacitor. Now with the capacitor, I think it bumps it out quite a bit, and then you can put the highest level capacitor in there, and it will uh, it, it'll go out quite a ways. So uh, right now, though, it's a little bit limited on the amount of, on the, the crops that it can do. So it can't do pans, harvest craft. Uh, there's a it can't probably it probably can't do any of the witchery crops. I don't think it can do the natura crops. I know it can do the orberry bushes. Um, orberry bushes are around here somewhere. I have some orberry bushes. Yeah, right there is my orberry bushes. Those are from Tinker's Construct though. So I know it can do those, and it can do Ender lilies. So I I, I know. I think it's supposed to be able to do these berry bushes, the orberry bushes, or not the, not the orberry bushes, but the natura bushes. I think it's supposed to be able to. But I don't, don't know why it wouldn't be able to do the, the, the crops. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I got some cotton seeds someplace. Let me just try that. I mean, might as well just test it right here on camera. Well. Not that anybody's watching, but I suppose I have this set to the archives, so it's possible somebody will take a look at it at some point. No. I don't really need to hoe that. Uh, so, potatoes. Take those out. Oh, yeah, i got to get the seeds. Mm. Cotton seeds. There's some cotton seeds. Well, it would be real easy to tell, because I should be able to swap the seeds. No. Oh, look at that. So I can use Natura crops, which I think is basically just cotton and barley. Yeah. Not too many crops with Natura. Like regular crops. There's berry bushes, cotton, barley. I don't think it adds too many other farmable crops. But that's good to see that it probably will do those. Um, and just just to prove that it is actually able to do those, I'll go ahead and break one. Of these. So if someone should plant a cotton seed there, no. yep. See, oh look at that cotton seed right there. Okay, so good to know. Good to no. know. So don't really need any manual cotton. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. But it did. It was a good thing to check. To verify, because I don't want to give out incorrect information. Try not to. I mean, I'm not always right. I might, I might think I'm always right, but I mean, it turns out that I'm actually occasionally wrong. My wife loves it when she catches me being wrong too, and she puts she marks it on the calendar. That's no joke. <laughs>
got these two over here. These were my potato and my carrot fields. But since I've got the managed farm over there that, that, that runs those crops just fine, I decided to go ahead and then move them over there just to be continuously produced. So what I'm going to use these two now for is for all the different PAMS foods, all the different PAM seeds, because I can't manage those with a uh, auto farmer yet. So, uh, I've gone ahead and requested the creator of Ender.io, that is Crazy Pants, really awesome modder. I don't know him um, per se, but I definitely, mm. definitely like his mods and you know if his mods are any indication of the way he thinks I probably like him in as a person too. Uh, it seems really cool. A couple of read, read many of his posts. Pretty damn awesome modder in my opinion. And as I was no. mentioning earlier, uh, a lot of the functionality that you, that I used to like in Mine Factory Reloaded and Thermal Expansion a lot a lot a lot of that functionality has he's kind of included that in his 172 version of the mod I mean there's been a ton of things added in the 172 version of Ender IO I, I just I can't cannot praise that guy enough for you know picking up the flag and mm. getting something out there long before you know the Thermal expansion and Mine Factory Reloaded are available, and I, I guess those guys are actually working on them, bringing those mods up, and you know, and getting them ready for 172 or 1710 probably now. They're probably just going to skip 172, um, but they're they're pretty complicated mods, and it's a team, and you know, people have real lives and everything, or some people have real lives, uh, not me. This is my life, Minecraft. Uh, but some people have to, uh, you know, deal with real life shit, and you know, you can't really knock them for that. And you know, it's gonna take them a little. You know, it'll come when it comes, I guess, is uh, the way you gotta look at it. And uh, you know, any any kind of rush uh, a programmer, and I know that from, you know, I've done some programming. Any attempt to rush a programmer is only gonna slow the process down. So, you know. Because it really just kind of, you know, puts unnecessary stress there, and stress is anti-productive to the creative process. So you want them to enjoy what they're doing, and then you will get a better mod from that, for sure. So. That's my two cents on it, I guess. So, what else do I got in this test pack? Um, I think I mentioned, well, obviously you can see that I have Thomcraft, but I don't have just Thomcraft. I've got a couple of Thomcraft add ons. So, I've got Thomic Tinkering, which I've unlocked a bit of. Now, in this world, because of the test world, I didn't want to spend like hours and hours and hours at the research table playing the minigame. You know, nothing wrong with the minigame per se, but um, I went ahead and set it to easy research mode where basically all I've got to do is get the required research points and then click on the icons in here and it'll just give me that research. So that's a thing. Uh, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I hate the mini. I don't want to play the mini game." Well, change your config. You know, you can edit that config, and you don't have to play that mini game. Um, you know, some people really like the mini game, and they're like, "Oh, but you know," and they're like, "Ah, oh, some of these, some of these, I don't need to play the mini game for. I can just click them, but I don't really like that. I would rather play the mini game and get them." Well, you can do that. There's a config option for that too. You can. Uh, customize the challenge level of your Thomcraft research. You can make it easier or harder than the default. Default is kind of a mixture of some things have to be played in the minigame and some things you can just purchase outright. Um, like I said, for the test server here, I've gone ahead and opted to do the 
purchase everything outright option, so I can just kind of uh, focus on. Oh, no, I have that yet. Yeah, I need that. Are you gonna focus? Um, so I can just focus on doing uh, magic. I don't have to worry about sitting around playing that little mini game. And then, I mean, honestly, I kind of like the mini game that came right before the current one. This, this, the one with the the, the six-sided hexagonal connect the dots things is not really I don't think that one's quite as much fun as the previous one where you had to slide the the runes around on the paper until you got the lines to connect I like that one a little bit better um, I don't find I don't find either of them any any either of them more challenging than the other I mean just like you know as a fun for me to play kind of you know perspective I would prefer the other one. So, oh, my witchcraft altar. That's what I came on. Just come over and show you my witchcraft altar. This thing got this baby update upgraded. You know, I was, I'm not sure how I get it up a little bit higher. I need to get it up past 10,000 for certain things. You know, and it's in the middle of a dark wood forest with tons of plants and stuff around. So, um, the thing is, is I don't think these botania flowers count towards the the witch witchcraft witchery altar I don't think they count so and if I come deeper into the woods we can see where I've got the the ritual set up ooh where I can perform unspeakable acts yeah uh, summon demons various other fun stuff and then I've got another area set up over this direction, kind of clearing, where over oh yeah, right here, where I can also set up some circles. And this is basically just the area that I set up to be able to make these circle talismans, and you know, do temporary circles, things that are going to be like, um, well, basically things that can be picked up into a talisman or or whatever. Uh, but yeah, there's another area over there for circles. Uh, let's see. This is the witch hut. I think I did. I go in here already. Let me show you this the witch hut. Got some nice uh, carpenter's bed in here. A little writing table and chair to sit there at. And a little, little decorative touches here. I like the the table. If you put the the flowers on there, the uh, botania flowers on there, they will stand upright in the middle. Kind of nice. Give you a little make it nice for you to make it like a uh, restaurant style standing thing I don't know whatever uh, the spinning wheel I, I really love the way the witch oven looks especially when you put it into like a regular looking you know fireplace thing I need to change these corner pieces to to be the actual slanted Carpenter's blocks. Maybe I could grab a carpenter's block. Eh, I don't need that right now. So it's pretty minor. I didn't have because that's what I did for the roof, obviously. Those are carpenter's blocks with hay bales for the straw roof. I thought that looked pretty nice. That was my wife's suggestion because I was like, well, "What should I do for this roof?" She's like, "Can you make it a straw roof?" I'm like, hey, "You know what? I can make it a straw roof." You see, got the the chimney back there. It's puffing out some cobweb smoke <laughs> and um, since this isn't an open server or anything I go ahead and show you my secret in here the secret bookshelf what's this there's a secret passage down underneath where the distillery and the kettle are stored this is something I thought was pretty cool I was like what's this redstone book from Bibliocraft. How does this work? Um, it works pretty freaking cool. Uh, if you put a redstone, if you craft a redstone book, now you can name it. See, I've named mine Way of Witchery. Of course, it, the fact that it's a Bibliocraft item kind of gives it away. And it's shiny. But if we look at redstone, we can see that there's a redstone book. Which is just a book and a torch crafted together. 
And what happens is when you put one of these books on a bibliocraft bookshelf, the bookshelf will emit a redstone signal equal to the strength of the slot that it's in, this being slot 0 and this being slot 15. So right now it's emitting a redstone signal 1, which is enough to power the drawbridge right here, which I have disguised as a dark oak panel, and which when I go ahead and do that, see, it retracts a piece of the carpet, and then come down here. Is that awesome? I think it's awesome. Now I could also set this up somehow to like, like if you put that book in a different slot, you know, it would increase, it would be, you know, like maybe if I set it up so that if I put it in say slot 15, it would send out a real strong signal and be able to activate some, something, I don't know what. Maybe a teleposer or a trap of some sort, or I don't know. You know, so you basically can set things up for different things. And you could also, you know, use this as like a quickly configurable volume control for like your open blocks, or for your open, yeah, open blocks radio. Of course, open blocks is not available for 172 yet. I'm not sure if the redstone book is in Bibliocraft 164? It probably is. I just maybe I never noticed it. There's a lot of things that have that I've found out recently about different mods that I had never known about and had played with those mods quite a bit. Um, like uh, another one that I, another block that I didn't know about for quite some time was the floodgate from uh, what you call it from Buildcraft. And for the longest, longest time, I was like, oh, I need a block that puts liquid back in the world. And I looked, and I looked, and like, and then there was like a mod that had a block that did that, but it was like for an old version of Minecraft, for like one sit for for like 1.3 or something like that, and it never got updated. I'm like, oh well, and then I looked some more and looked around and just couldn't find it, couldn't find it here. Lo and behold, uh, it was always there the floodgate. It's just I had never thought to look for a block called the floodgate. <laughs> I was like fluid valves, fluid distributor, uh, you know, fluid ejector, you know, all kinds of other things. I searched through the NEI and searched the internet and it just never came up. And, but then I finally I seen it I seen it first I seen it in a Direwolf 20 video and then like a few days later, I seen it in a Vagrant video. I'm like, well, shoot, that was there the whole time, and like, there was like, I needed it like back for some builds and some other servers and some other, you know, other times. But you know, well, those times have passed, so no, no point in worrying about spilled milk. But yeah, so next time I need to be able to put fluid back in the world, I know that I can do that with with uh, Buildcraft. So we do have Buildcraft in this pack. Or I do have Build and We. There's no We here. It's just me right now. Um, I do have Buildcraft in this pack. I have not used it at all <laughs> for anything yet, as far as I know. Um, I, I tend to stick with the Ender IO conduits and moving things around. You can see I use on Ender IO fluid duct here, and down here I'm using Ender IO item conduits. They have a whole new system of upgrades this time around, which I really like. I really like these, uh, the way these work. So now you craft, and they they work. These things, this this functionality was kind of built in in the 164 version with the item filters and the ability to move. Um, well, there was two tiers of item conduit in 164. In 172, there's only one type of on item conduit, but then you can apply an upgrade that will allow it to move things faster. Now, with my resource pack, it really screws these interfaces up. 
Uh, this is not the way it's supposed to look. You can see, you can kind of see as I'm mousing over where the there's slots are not where they belong. Um, I mean, that's a Sortex issue. That's um, I, I won't play without my Sortex though. So uh, I, I deal with it. It's it's slightly annoying, but I know that it'll eventually get around to being corrected as soon as. Uh, Ender IO kind of stabilizes out. Right now he's still adding a lot of content, doing um, updates on a fairly regular basis. So I imagine once those become a little less uh, c uh, regular and he's get and he basically announces a uh, a official release rather than an alpha, beta, or whatever we're calling this. Uh, that Sortex will go ahead and rewrite their or redo their uh, interfaces for it based on that version. Now, something I might eventually get into, or I would think I might like to get into, is you know writing some or making some uh, graphics for the Sortex pack. You know, contributing to that community effort because that's what the Sortex fanver is. It's a community effort. A lot of those textures that are used in it are submitted by the people that use the pack. You know, you don't like a particular texture or you know you want textures for a particular mod that you use, you know, and if you have any kind of uh, graphical ability, and I do have a little tiny bit of graphical ability, a little tiny bit. I used to be better, I think. Uh, my brain's getting soft in my old age. But, uh, or my creativity is is uh, dwindling, I guess, or something like that. Anyway, uh, but I can still make a graphic or two. I still make some graphics. Uh, I probably should just. Or, okay, what's, I was like, what's stopping me from jumping? There's a lamp above my head. Probably could just use my uh, my wand from or yeah staff whatever it's called from uh, the Tanya mod to level this out, but I think it would give it a little overkill. I just kind of want to fix this right here. I'm tired of falling off this little ledge into these little gully gutter things over here. Kind of annoy this out of me or. Just fix it. I've been looking at that for like ages. I've been like, I need to fix that. Now that that's that's probably okay because it's just a drop. That's a drop. Oh, you shouldn't be back there anyway. Uh, and then yeah, this this is the original mine that I created, but I don't mine like that anymore. I don't do that anymore. I don't go underground. I don't bother with going underground because I've got a different mining method now. Let me get this out. I'll show it to you. I don't know if I've got any viewers yet, but I'll show, I guess I'll show somebody that might be watching it later on. Probably don't have any viewers. I've seen nothing pop up in my chat. That's okay. It's the middle of the night here in the U.S. I'm up when I probably shouldn't be. Probably not too many people around right now to view. I guess Europe is just waking up. There, that's what I mean, right there. And I don't really have too many people that know who the hell I am. So, this is only my first official Twitch broadcast. I did one little kind of test run the other day just to make sure things worked. Mm. Ooh. That's my milker right there, the milk source. I'd be really mad if somebody killed my cow. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of need to build a genetics machine. I want it to kind of look like a futuristic tech building kind of ish thing, maybe more like a or, or like a uh, you know like a. Uh, like an office that you walk into, you know, with a counter, and you know, you'd be like, come in and like, hey, I want to uh, order some 
some gene upgrades, you know. Can I get uh can I get the uh ability to to breathe water and maybe uh you know, I, I'd like to be uh, you know, I'd like to fix this uh, you know to be a, to get the my hair to grow a little faster. Can I get the woolly woolly gene? Can I get that? Yeah, something like that. Um <laughs> uh yeah, so right now these things take a ton a ton of ton of power or well charcoal to accomplish a gene spice or basically to upgrade my genetic code fortunately I don't lose my genetic code when mm -hmm. I die right now I guess that's still a thing that you can you know I don't have it set in the, in the config to lose genes on death but if I did it wouldn't be a big deal because I keep a copy of my current genetic code right there so yeah I was going to show you this okay well let me show you this first because this is where it resides it just lives right here you might have seen me go and pie this earlier we come up here and we look in this chest up here we see we got some ore right in there okay that's not what I need I need gold I want to actually upgrade this to be able to. And you see, there's a teleporter down there. I'm sure you can kind of. Anybody knows anything about blood magic probably knows where this is going. So, if I set this right, well, let me do it right there. How many is that? One, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's not gonna. It won't mess up the house. I don't think, right? Yeah, you know, won't mess up the house. So then, if I put that, this here, de yeah, this is the demonic transposition focus, the, the highest tier focus, which will transport a seven by seven area. <laughs> we'll do. And now you can see, I'm mining. What this does is, there's actually two rituals here. This is a ritual of magnetism with a ritual of the pressure on it. And that's kind of the way it was, you know, he, he kind of, you know, designed them to fit together like this. And I've added some smooth stuff just to kind of, you know, make it look nice. And then I left this little block out here so I would be able to get to this button again when it's done. Because, uh, yeah, you can see that I can't really get to it from the side now that the the platform is in place. So there's that. And the interesting thing is, is when I click this button to send it back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till it uh, is done doing its thing. Get, I'm getting lots of iron from this position. Which is good. Iron is good. And I can just, later I can just move it on down this direction. I'm just, that's why I, I put it on the corner there so I would know when I've, uh, so I would know that I've already done this particular 7x7 seven seven area. And that's what these does. It scans a 7x7 seven seven area underneath it, all the way down to bedrock, and sucks up all the ore out of the ground. Uses a little bit of my uh, life pool, my blood magic life pool. Uh, well worth it though. This is an uh, excellent method of mining. And then uh, if I come around here and go up the ladder. We can see that it's breaking down ores and picking things up. Now what I want to do though is, is this the crusher one up here can be upgraded. It can have two different upgrades. It could be upgraded with either what could it be upgraded with? Oh yeah. It can be upgraded with fortune which takes diamond blocks, and I definitely don't have diamond blocks for that. I don't have hardly any diamonds. If I did have diamonds, I'd be wearing blood armor instead of this mana steel and stuff. Mana steel's nice. Really good for early game. Not too hard to get. Um, but it's, it's basically just iron armor that, that doesn't lose their ability, that uses the mana to fix itself continuously. Um, but instead... Let's see here. Oh, other upgrade. Yeah, I'm not doing diamonds. I'm not doing fortune. 
Um, and to get the fortune, you have to like to get fortune three, you have to have twelve diamond blocks, and you fill in this this three by this space here, one two three, into the corner, and then one two three there, one two three there, and one two three there. Uh, what I actually want to do is I want to use gold blocks, and I need twelve of them, so I need a lot more gold than what I have. Oh, good, I'm bringing up some gold. Oh, sounds like it might be done. So let me grab the gold out of there. I don't really care about the rest right now. I've got plenty of the other materials. And you know, okay, so see where I'm at right now. Oops, let me hit the button. And then you see that that lock changed. What happened? Oh look, I'm not in the same place. So yeah, if if I'm standing inside of the the field of effect, I go with it. So now I gotta come back over here and pick up my uh transposer. Now in one seven two or my teleposer, sorry. In one seven or one one not one seven, one six four. Uh blood magic. The teleposer was not able to transport players across dimensional limits. So if you you could send your room mm -hmm. or your building or whatever your structure, you could send it across dimensions, but you would never go with it across dimensions. I don't know if he has fixed that yet in this version. I guess I could test that because I'm curious about that. Would be something to test. And also, I'm kind of curious about whether it works in the nether. So let's go over there and try that. Let me just try that right now while I'm thinking about it. We got this stuff out. The nether is really easy for me to get to. And it's not especially dangerous so for me at this point. I'm going to put that there. Hmm. So I don't know what side to put the button. Because uh, this isn't the same orientation. I think I think I want the button on this side. I guess I should have paid attention to my cardinal directions before I came through. Well, oh, cool! I guessed right. I guessed. Hit that nail on the head. Oh yay! Look at that. I'm getting other quartz. That's nice. That's real nice. Now it's probably all I'll get because this area of the nether was generated before any uh before I added a lot of the mods or any mods that would alter the nether. I don't actually think I have any mods that would alter the nether. Um as far as ore spawning. Not a hundred sure on that one. Let me go. I'm, I'll come back to that. I just want, I want to let it go ahead and get the nether quartz and whatever. I'll just go over here because I never crossed this uh, lava lake. What's this? That's a good one. Take that. Get a little fill up there. Never crossed this lava lake, so if there was anything new, I should be able to spot it over here. New that was added in with the current uh, mod packs. Okay, that's not new. Those are Maturus things. Wait, okay, these are new. These are the uh, Undertakers from the yeah Wither Shrubs. I'll take those. Dimensional bread. Nether bricks, I could use some of that. I don't need sand. Actually, I could use sand to save me uh, some power from having to process it. Because uh, I don't really like tearing up the beach too much. I've already pretty much tore up the beach that's closest to me as much as I really kind of want to. So yeah, this is a new area over here. Nothing too special about it. Just the undertakers from uh, Ganny's. Uh, raw beef. I'll take that. Can't shift click out of the thing there. That's interesting. Sand. I'll take more sand. Definitely don't want the dirt. We got 
more than enough dirt, I think. I just want to see that. What is that? Well, that's kind of weak. Drain it at least. What's that? Oh, it's just a bit of lava. I don't have any. Well, it's not a big deal. I could fly around and get some of that stuff uh, pretty easily now. You see, I'm using flight potions from Blood Magic for my flight ability. That's kind of my preferred method these days for flying. There are some other methods I have available to me in this pack, such as wings from the uh, Extra Utilities mod. Of course, they are not overly easy to craft. You do need to get another star to craft them. So, I mean, I could fight the nether at this point, but I've been kind of holding off on it until I got some blood armor crafted. Now, you might have said, but you must have killed the, the wither, right? You have that tier 5 altar over there. Well, that was part of um, my friend's my friend Darnell who created the, the spawn village there he thought it would be nice to go ahead and put a tier 5 altar in for just basically anybody who wanted to, uh, to play on here to be able to access uh, now when he put it in though he said uh, he, he put in basic rooms he didn't have any rooms upgraded on and he said well you better do that in, in survival I'm like okay no problem I mean, you put in you put in the uh, you put in, you put in the uh so that's done and as you can see i didn't go with it so that didn't change okay good to know does still does not send players across dimensions